One of the few times during this pandemic that Donald Trump has invoked the Defense Production Act was to uh, force meatpacking plants to stay operational, to stop the supply chain from breaking down and making it so that people temporarily can't get access to meat. And we have been talking on the Damage Report now for weeks about the various obvious cost, the very obvious cost of uh, making people go back to work in these places that have already been sites for the spread of coronavirus. We're now finding out that some of them far worse than we thought. More than 1,000 workers at the Tyson Food Plant in Waterloo have tested positive for the coronavirus, more than double the number Governor Kim Reynolds had said the day earlier. The news came as the Arkansas-based company reopened the plant on Thursday after a two-week closure following a spike in COVID-19 cases there. So we thought it was bad. It was actually twice as bad. That's not, I wanna be very clear about this, that is not at Tyson Food Plants. That's at one plant. 1,000 cases of coronavirus at one workplace. How do you how do you protect yourself if a thousand people in the same plant? Like how many people work there? I like think if there are a I think thousand it's several cases, thousand. I think. Yeah. But okay. If there are a thousand cases, you can bet they're gonna be double, triple that, and everyone will have it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In in very short order. Um, I just want to say on the meat packing uh, and meat processing plants, um, it reminds me of that movie Food Inc. from the early 2000s. It was a book and then it was a movie and mm -hmm. it's a great film. Uh, Greg Kinnear, I highly recommend it. The best quote from that um, entire movie is, I can't say it, but it's basically, there's poop in the meat, Bob. Mm -hmm. Because the thing about meat processing plants um, they're already unsanitary to begin with. And coronavirus is just showing us all of the places that we've been ignoring for decades and decades, like nursing homes, like meat processing plants. Uh, the conveyor belt moves so fast that when these workers, largely undocumented and immigrant, um, are pulling out guts, some of the poo gets into the meat. But the conveyor belt mo is moving so fast that they just have to keep on going. So when you're eating meat, you're eating a little poo. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and by the way, we, if you haven't been following, we've done a couple of videos, both in late fall when these uh, regulation changes were proposed, but also a couple of weeks ago when they were put into effect, um, that uh, raised the speed of the, the conveyor belts and took down the number of inspectors who are watching the conveyor belts. They put those into effect during the pandemic because there was less reason to be worried about contamination of the meat. So, um, a thousand cases, they shut down the plant for two weeks, huge sacrifice, and now they're starting up again, so what are they gonna do? Well, Tyson said it's requiring all returning workers, as well as new hires, to be tested for COVID-19. Employees who have not been tested will be unable to return to work, and we already know in some of these states, if you refuse to return to work because you feel like it is almost a guarantee that you will become exposed to coronavirus, uh, you will lose your job. That's not just a Tyson thing, that's a statewide thing in multiple states. Tyson said it will require employees to wear masks or face shields where protective barriers can't be installed at workstations. In addition to wellness tests before workers start their shifts, Tyson now has an on-site clinic to provide team members with enhanced care, including testing for COVID-19. So that all sounds great. Um, and Tyson wants to assure you that they are taking this seriously. Um, but it wasn't that long ago that they had a very different view of this. And so I saw a write-up in the New York Times of uh, how things worked here in the early stage of this thing, just, you know, a month ago. And uh, take a look at this. So this is after uh, Tony Thompson, who's the Black Hawk County Sheriff, visited that same Waterloo Tyson Food uh, pork plant. This is on April 10th. So just one month ago, and this is what they found. Workers, many of them immigrants, were crowded elbow to elbow as they broke down hog carcasses zipping by on a conveyor belt. The few who had face coverings were a motley assortment of bandanas, painter's masks, or even sleep masks stretched around their mouths. Sheriff Thompson and other local officials lobbied Tyson to close the plant, but Tyson was, quote, less than cooperative. They sent a text message to their employees one week later saying, Waterloo Tyson is running. Thank you, team members. We are proud of you. And within just five days, the plant had closed. As of Thursday, 1,031 coronavirus infections, more than a third of the workforce, some are on ventilators, three have died, according to Tyson. And perhaps if they had taken it seriously and not tried to keep the hog carcasses zipping by as long as they possibly could, some of those people wouldn't become infected. Some of those people might not have died. I mean, I think that we know that um coronavirus is exposing which bosses and which co corporations uh, believe that their workforces are expendable. And 
I think in industries like agriculture and in meat processing, where it is predominantly done by immigrant workers, some undocumented workers, we know that they are treated based on what they are paid, based on the safety conditions in which they are forced to work, that they're treated like they are expendable. So who cares if they get sick and die? Who cares if they can't afford their health care, right? Mm. I mean, like, and I just want to point out also, Tyson has a history of collaborating with ICE, working very closely with ICE. Now, they've been working since 2011, arguably before ICE was like super militarized, of course, although de deportations increased under Obama. But remember, a lot of these uh, meat processing plants have been working with ICE to help deport their own workers. Yeah. And arrest and detain their own workers, knocking on their, you know, the trailers and where they live, ra uh, waking them at five in the morning or earlier than that, and hauling them out of their homes because they know where they live, right? Like this is how they've always treated their workforce, um, and now we're seeing that, yeah, directly they don't care about their lives. Exactly, and and the con like I I don't know for any individual person watching this. I am hoping that one of two things will convince you to take this seriously. Either a sense of empathy for the workers at these plants who Tyson's saying they're going to be more watchful for, more protective of, but we know what they were doing just three or four weeks ago. Either you care about them or if not for them, like you don't think that this is going to contribute to the spread of coronavirus? That if, if, if hair and nails and feces were getting by before, that you don't think some coronavirus is going to spread... That one plant apparently uh, contributes 4% of the total pork being sent around the country. All over the country, by the way. You don't think that they're going to miss some... Oh, God. They're moving the lines faster. They've cut the number of inspectors into one-third of what it once was. This is a recipe for basically a hog filled with poop, metaphorically and literally. <laughs> Yeah, and, and like let's remember, like we should not have some empathy or sympathy for these meat processing plants and corporations like Tyson, right? Like when it comes to actual farmers, when it comes to people raising, um, you know, pigs like sustainably, et cetera, et cetera. Like that's very, very different than what this is. These guys have been leeching off of this system for a very long time. They have gotten handouts before. They have huge lobbies in Washington. Um, and they, you know, argue, of course, that like, if we don't get subsidies, then Chinese products will come in and like kick us out. Well, the entire, the entire meat trade, honestly, is really messed up. Like it's disgusting. It's gross. Uh, factory farming is disgusting. Factory meat processing is disgusting. I mean, once again, coronavirus is, is, is just that little introspective moment for us to look at how we do things and how we should be changing for the better. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like I had said weeks ago, like I understand some of these meat alternatives still, the price needs to get down a little bit. Um, and they're not necessarily perfect for you health wise in comparison to actual all natural, you know, vegetables and all that. But a lot of them are very competitive substitutes for meat. And, um, you know, for all of the obvious reasons that have been long known for a long time, it's a good alternative. And now for this as well, hypothetically, it might keep you safe as well. So consider it. If you haven't had an Impossible Burger or Beyond Sausage or something like that, just consider it. For some of these, okay. a lot of the meat that Americans eat is barely meat anyway. How much meat do you think is in a chicken nugget? <laughs> it's trace amounts at best. So just take out the last bit. Trump is so wedded to like the meat industry. I feel like he's just ultimately afraid. Like, is the Big Mac going away? Do they? How's Maybe. the Big Mac? You know, he's like, how's every day he gets like a Big Mac report, and he just wants to make sure that the disgusting beef that may is in the yeah. Big Mac that is like you know tinged. The reason it's delicious is because of the science behind it, right? And the little <laughs> like whatever taste nodes. That's what I'm going to call them. Yeah, they pack, uh, they pack more taste nodes in than other countries have been able to so far. Mm. But all you all you guys like is pink slime. I'm sorry, don't at me. But y'all just like pink slime. Go eat pink slime. They should just sell the pink slime. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the fake chicken nuggets. It's the same. It might literally be the same thing. Would you be surprised to find out it was actually the same thing and that there was no chicken in either? Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Cast or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want, with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.